Hey, so uh, it's been a while. There's a lot of videos I'm doing right now. I'm working on Suicide Squad Part 2, rewritten, trying to finish editing that video coming soon. And I'm also working on a giant Star Wars video that's gonna piss the world off. I decided to take a break from those and to make a little quick video about She-Hulk. I haven't actually watched the whole She-Hulk, She-Hulk? I haven't actually seen the whole She-Hulk show. I did notice that they released a clip with Daredevil because Daredevil's obviously in the show. I've been kind of vocal about my concerns with Daredevil in this show. You have to understand the Daredevil show is something that means a lot to me and the Daredevil character is my favorite character that Marvel has ever written. I think he is genuinely wonderfully written. And I think Marvel's Daredevil is probably the best comic book show ever made, like along with Smallville. Those are, Daredevil I think is better written, but Smallville I have more nostalgia for, if that makes sense. And they released a clip a few days ago, and I said on Twitter that I hated it. I didn't give a lot of reasons as to why, and I still do hate it. But uh, I decided to give it a watch because the curiosity got the best of me. Now, when it comes to Marvel Phase 4, I've been very checked out. I stuck around for the beginning, but really, after Loki, I kind of just was all over the place. I didn't really watch Loki. I watched an episode and a half and just kind of stopped. I skipped whatever the next couple movies were. I didn't see Shang-Chi, or Eternals, or Thor Love and Thunder, or What If, or at least most of What If. What else is in the MCU Phase 4? And I really didn't have an intention of watching She-Hulk. Today though, I want to talk about this specific episode of She-Hulk because Daredevil returned, and obviously I have to see what Daredevil does in the show, and I have to watch the episode where he returns, even if I'm pretty sure it's a filler episode. Bear in mind, I have no idea how this episode stacks up compared to the rest of the episodes, the other seven. I've heard this is the best one. I, I don't know if that's the case. I haven't seen the first seven, so I'm not really going to be criticizing the main story. I can't because I don't have the proper context. And I think part of it is, I'm, I'm assuming that within context, it means more to me because out of context, I thought that scene was so damn funny. I, I laughed my ass off at the last five minutes or so. Do it. I'm sure the show set it up in some way and I'm sure it's like bigger than I realize because from what I can gather, people are mad at She-Hulk for having sex with someone, which I have to assume that isn't the full story, but based on what I can see, that sounds really funny. So let's talk about Daredevil's return to the MCU. Oh! <laughs> Now, obviously, this isn't the first time Daredevil's come back. In No Way Home, he had a short little cameo with Tom Holland, which I really enjoyed. And, of course, a few days later, the Hawkeye finale came out, where, of course, Kingpin was the villain. And I have my opinions on the betrayal of Kingpin. Let me just quickly get into Kingpin's reappearance, because it kind of ties into my expectations going to this episode. Hawkeye is a show that I actually liked a lot up until the finale, where it just kind of turned into a mediocre mess. So Kingpin gets blackmailed by Haley Steinfeld's mother. Instead of just killing her in his private office where nobody can do anything about it, like there's no one but his goons there to what I understand, he lets her leave so he can plan to murder her later. Had they been in a public restaurant or something, I think this would have been fine, but considering there was no one in the room and it looks like it's his headquarters, he probably should have just killed her there. After that, he plans the most insane scheme to kill her. And his scheme is send people to kill her and then wait for her by the car in case she escapes. Then when she gets to her car, attack her in public. I'm not even joking. Instead of just sitting in, his, in her car and waiting to murder her inside the car where no one can really do anything about it, like if he suffocates her or something, he waits outside and in his white suit, which is very noticeable at night, rips off the car door from its hinges and tries to murder this woman in public where people can see him and incriminate him. So anyway, Kate Bishop stops him. And then magically, Eleanor moves to the front of the car with the dead body, moves the dead body, the dead car driver, and positions the car away from the curb and is able to hit Kingpin through a window all without him noticing, she backs up this car, <laughs> positions it to where she can hit him, and then does it all without anyone noticing. That is some very special skill right there. We have to find Kate, I think she's- <gasps> ah! 
Don't leave, Eleanor. One minute later. One minute, 37 seconds later. So Kingpin goes flying through a building, has an insane endurance level, and then fights Haley Steinfeld. He kind of just messes with her, he pushes her a few times, and I feel like after the second or third try, he would have just snapped her neck, but instead he continues to push her. At first, I think it makes sense, like yeah, Kingpin would just kind of push her, he doesn't have the time for this, but after the second or third time, wouldn't it make more sense to snap her freaking neck? So then she does a little flip trick with the button and Kingpin blows up and he still has all his clothes intact that haven't been ripped at all and he basically can survive anything. I'm convinced that you can launch a nuke at this guy and he still won't die. Really the Hawkeye finale is just a cartoon and it's really frustrating. After Hawkeye, I was a little skeptical of Daredevil being in the MCU because I expected him to be terrible, just like Kingpin. I mean, I expected Charlie Cox to give a great performance, just like Vincent D'Onofrio, but I expected the writing to just destroy his character. And honestly, I'm impressed after watching She-Hulk because they didn't completely destroy his character, but at the same time, I don't think it was very good. You know, here's all I'll say about the episode. I think people are exaggerating on both sides. People who say it's an absolute abomination against cinema, I think are exaggerating a bit. And people who say it is the best thing ever, best content ever because Daredevil, I think are also exaggerating a little bit. I think it is exactly what I expect from the current day MCU. Perfectly watchable, fine, semi-entertaining, mediocre television. I made a tweet a while ago, back in like July. I'll try to find it if I can. But in that tweet, I basically implied that the Disney Plus shows, the Marvel shows, have basically become the new CW, you know, the new Arrowverse. And I think this episode really just kind of proved that. It is kind of what, like what the Arrowverse has been for the last couple years. But let's just talk about the episode in full. So let's start with the plot of this episode. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The plot of this episode is dog shit. I mean it. The plot is very, very weak. Here's the plot of the episode. So... Leapfrog, I believe is his character's name. Leapfrog or Leapfrog, whatever the villain's name is. One eternity later. All right, I've done extensive research and uh, yes, the villain's name is indeed Leapfrog. So Leapfrog is a new superhero who got his suit made from Luke Jacobson. And in his first fight, he attempts to fly away, but his suit, which I guess Jacobson claimed to be inflammable, caught fire and he suffered burns on his leg. So he takes this to She-Hulk, who's an attorney, and she agrees to help him with his case. She doesn't ask a lot of questions, which I think is a bit odd. I thought lawyers were to ask specific questions, but I guess she forgot how to do her job. Luke Jacobson is also the tailor for She-Hulk. He makes all her clothes, I guess, which is fine. You know, that's n nothing wrong with that. She has to sue him now because she's been assigned to the case of Leapfrog. Her and Leapfrog, are against Jacobson. Jacobson lawyers up and gets Matt Murdock to be his lawyer. And I will say this, Matt's introduction scene was great. I loved his introduction scene. I think that's the best scene in the whole episode, that in the bar scene. So Matt comes in and he debates She-Hulk. And in this scene, there's a few cool things. Uh, Matt says that the Sokovia Accords have been repealed, which is something I like. It's not super in depth, but it is a nice little nod because for years I've kind of been wondering along with some other people what the Sokovia Accord state is because if the Sokovia Accords is still in effect, Endgame, Far From Home, and pretty much everything after should have been drastically impacted. In this scene we see Matt protecting Jacobson and we make a discovery that Leapfrog put jet fuel into his rocket boosters for his suit. Mr. Patilio, what kind of fuel did you use in your boosters? Jet fuel. Wait a minute, but you used jet fuel in your boosters? Because that's not what my instructions said. And apparently, Jacobson's instructions said do not do that. And this makes She-Hulk look really dumb, and she is really dumb. So they lose the case, and it's dismissed automatically as soon as Matt the Chad Murdoch walks in, which I, I kind of thought was funny. I think this is the first of two instances where I'm going to say She-Hulk is a little too stupid. I'll say this right now, okay, I don't know the actress's name, but the actress that plays She-Hulk, I like her a lot. In real life, she seems nice. And in the show, I think she does a really good job. She clearly has fun playing this role. And I think she does it, she does it very well. She's entertaining, she's funny, she has nice chemistry with Charlie Cox and the other actors. I have no problem watching her. I think she's fun. 
The actual writing behind her, though, I think was kind of weak in this episode. Again, I can't speak for the rest of the show, but here, she, she seems really naive and kind of stupid. I have to assume, because he's her tailor, that she also had instructions with the stuff that he made her, right? Because I'm assuming he gives instructions to everyone that he makes suits for. So would she not ask Leapfrog that, or does he only give Leapfrog instructions? Like, it's kind of confusing. And then we get a bar scene with Matt and Jennifer, which I thought was a good scene, probably the best in the episode, along with the courtroom scene. We get a nice scene of them connecting. You know, it's, it's nice. I like Matt Murdock in this scene. They both get called away, and this is when we get to more of Leapfrog. So Daredevil's chasing Leapfrog, and in this scene, Leapfrog has kidnapped Luke Jacobson. Daredevil's chasing him, and this man decides to call She-Hulk. I don't know why he did this. I guess he needed someone to help him, but he just kidnapped Luke Jacobson, and his instinct reaction is to call She-Hulk and tell her to help him. He risked a lot by doing that. She-Hulk is stronger and bigger than Daredevil. Why would you notify her to what you're doing? He literally called her. When she was there, he was driving away with Luke in the car. He is very lucky that Daredevil didn't get to tell her in time that he kidnapped Luke Jacobson. Because had he done that, she would have instantly grabbed the car and taken him out. Like, this was insane. It was insane that this even worked. Leapfrog is so stupid. You clearly have goons. Get them to grab Daredevil or something. So yeah, he kidnapped Luke Jacobson, notifies his own attorney about it so she can help Matt stop him. And we get the fight between Matt and She-Hulk. Now, I'm very mixed on this because on the one hand, I like Charlie Cox and I think this scene is kind of fun. It's, it's entertaining-ish. What I don't like is She-Hulk again acts stupid. Matt instantly says, You need to back off. You're making a mistake. Now She-Hulk, after already hearing and realizing her client's an idiot that has ignored things and done stupid things, doesn't hear him out, but instead tries to murder this man. She destroys the parking garage just to try to get him, and then she throws a car at him. Why would you not hear him out? She-Hulk actually stupid, and also the CGI on her, while it got better from the trailers, still is not that great. And then Matt, when he gets away from her, after she makes a joke, he makes a quip about his ass not being whooped. <laughs> My uh, ass remains unwhooped. Now, Matt, this is a good five seconds where she's not attacking you. Why didn't you take these five seconds to say he just kidnapped Luke Jacobson? You know that's his attorney. You know who She-Hulk is. Tell She-Hulk that Leapfrog just kidnapped Luke Jacobson. He's the villain. Something like that. Like, in instead of saying vital information, which is definitely in character for him, he makes a quip. Now, I know what's coming my way. Oh, it's accurate to the comics. He makes jokes in the comics all the time. He made jokes in the Daredevil show. Shut up. Listen, I am not judging this based on the comics. I'm judging this based on what's accurate to the show that came out a few years ago. And in that show, he did make jokes. Only one, they were part of a dry sense of humor and they were different kind of jokes. And two, he made them when he was Matt Murdock, not when he was Daredevil. He very rarely ever cracked a joke when he was Daredevil. He never did it the way he does here, where he literally just pauses, gives Leapfrog a few more seconds to get away with Luke Jacobson, and makes a joke. Like, he could have literally just notified her what was going on in that five seconds, but like, hey, hey, he's got Luke Jacobson, he kidnapped him, help me, you idiot. He could have done something like that, and the episode would have ended. <laughs> like, it, it really annoys me. And the quip in general wasn't very funny, and it wasn't necessary. I do like the shot, but... The actual, just the dialogue, I'm not fond of. In general, I think they have Matt quip just a bit too much in this episode. I like that he's smiling. I like some of the things he says. But when he's fighting, he's quipping more. Like, for example, towards the end when he's fighting the goons, he makes some quips about the strategies they should use. That is so not in character for him. Daredevil rarely talks when he's fighting. And why would he ever talk about lawyer strategies? The angle this more is a form of traumatic expression due to undiagnosed PTSD. So the devil ninja guy, he, he's a lawyer? No, uh, I'm just a big fan of legal dramas. Like, that compromises his identity. Why would he do that? He's so stupid. But anyway, they find Leapfrog, and they break in, and on this rooftop, She-Hulk kind of has a back and forth with him, which I enjoyed for the most part. The only part I don't like is when she kind of talks down to him, and she says that she should just go in smashing. 
His response is that just to trust him, that stealth is the better way to go about it. I feel like it's very obvious why stealth was better, but the show didn't point it out. She said that she should smash stuff, but then I feel like the logical response would be, yeah, Hulk is indestructible, but I'm not, and neither is Luke Jacobson, who is the hostage. So really, She-Hulk's plan could have compromised Luke Jacobs' safety. What if Leapfrog instantly jumped to hold a gun to Luke Jacobson's head as soon as he heard She-Hulk? The show doesn't confront that idea, but I feel like it makes a lot more sense to do so. Like, She-Hulk's way doesn't make sense for logical reasons that Daredevil doesn't point out, which I thought was a little weird. And I feel like just her saying she's better than him, or at least implying it, and saying, yeah, my way is better, your way is dumb, we shouldn't do stealth, is just kind of annoying. And it, again, it's her being a little too stupid. Though I did like their interaction before that, where Daredevil listens to her heartbeat. I thought that was kind of cute. And their, their relationship in general, I think, is kind of cute. I don't really have a big issue with it. I did enjoy Matt actually going in the hallway and uh, fighting the crooks. I was hoping for a bit more, uh, a bit longer. And I was hoping for something that maybe rivaled the old hallway fights a bit more. But for what we got, it was all right. The part where She-Hulk crashes on them and possibly kills them, or at least severely cripples them, I did not like. And I feel like Matt should have taken an issue with that, considering she could have very well killed these people. And Matt has always been against killing. That's firmly a part of his character. Really, you never think for one second, shit, I just killed a human being. It's being pretty generous. A human being who did a lot of stupid shit, maybe even evil, but had one small piece of goodness in him. Maybe just a scrap, Frank, but something. And then you come along and that one tiny flicker of light gets snuffed out forever. Yeah. Redemption, Frank. No. It's real. Jesus and it's possible. Christ. The people you murder deserve another chance. Why to kill again, rape again? Is that what no, you Frank, want? to try again, Frank. And then after that, we get a moment on top of kind of a roof that I actually really, really like. It's probably my favorite moment with him in the Daredevil suit. Uh, them talking on the roof, you know, the, the chemistry is really good there. The dialogue is really good. I like their interactions. And of course, it ends with them screwing in her apartment, which, um, again, I don't really have an issue with. The part I really did not like, and this is something Marvel does so much, and I really shouldn't even be surprised, but I somehow I am. They have Daredevil do the walk of shame in his Daredevil suit. I get the joke. And I know people are going to come at me saying I'm being too mean. And I know a lot of people apparently like the joke. Good for you if you do. I just... It's not that I don't get the joke. I understand the walk of shame Daredevil joke. I just... It doesn't make sense. Why would... Why would he casually walk in the street doing the walk of shame in his devil suit? Is that what he does at night? At night, does he literally walk out of his apartment in the Daredevil suit and just walk towards a crime scene? I get it's daylight, but why wouldn't you sneak around? Is he just going to walk into whatever apartment he's staying at for the next couple days and take his suit and then go on the plane? He's, is he going to go on the plane in his Daredevil suit? Like, it's things like this that just kind of like, it raises questions that it doesn't need to. Some things I missed. The CGI I kind of briefly touched upon, but... CGI is not very convincing. Specifically on Daredevil, it wasn't as convincing. There's a shot where she picks him up and takes off his mask. It's just, I don't have a problem with the scene really, at least this part of the scene, but it's just not very convincing, the CGI in both areas. And also Daredevil does a lot of flips and it's done with CGI, so it's not very convincing and it, he does them a lot. The CG flips, they're all there. It took me out of it when I first saw him. I was very taken aback by the amount of CG flipping it actually reminded me a lot of Ben Affleck's Daredevil. So overall, I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, it was bad. Like, don't get me wrong. It wasn't good. But honestly, I I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it. I, I kind of did enjoy it. Maybe it's because my expectations are so low, because honestly, I haven't really enjoyed a lot of the MCU in a while. I think the performances are great. I don't know who the guy is that plays Luke Jacobson, but I, I, I actually really liked him in this episode. I don't know anything about this character. But I thought he was really fun. He was entertaining. I think the actor that played him, whatever his name is, does a really good job. She-Hulk actress, even though I've criticized She-Hulk's character in this video, I think the actress does a pretty decent job. And Charlie Cox himself is a legend. He is, I think, the one of the best actors, if not the best actor to ever play a comic book character. Like, he's up there with, I think, Hugh Jackman, Robert Pattinson, Ryan Reynolds. Like, I think he's up there with those guys in terms of perfect comic book castings. He clearly has a lot of love for the character. You can feel Charlie Cox's love for this character every time he plays him. Now to answer the question in the title, was Daredevil ruined? Not necessarily, but kinda. 
I was expecting this episode to be a lot more egregious than it was. I was expecting a much more aggressive, quippy Daredevil. And I'm thankful I didn't get that, but I did still get some quips. Again, my problem with him in this episode is there are moments where he will do something weirdly out of character for the sake of a joke. For instance, the walk of shame. I, I don't think Daredevil would ever do the walk of shame in his Daredevil suit. And then the quips, you know, when he gives the my ass hasn't been whooped line. It was kind of funny and you I can see how people can associate that with the comic book Daredevil. And you're right, it is kind of associated with that, but in the context of the scene, it doesn't make any sense for this version of Daredevil. Daredevil, he has a moment here, a good five to 10 seconds to tell She-Hulk that Leapfrog has kidnapped Luke Jacobson. For all you know, he could be trying to kill him in that car right now. And you're wasting this small amount of time for a joke. My uh, ass remains unwhooped. But again, it's, it's something that I've come to expect from the MCU. They frequently have characters do stupid things for the sake of a joke. And it's like, it just annoys me. I think his endurance is a bit much. You know, if you go back and watch Daredevil, part one of the reasons why a lot of people gravitated towards him is because he, he had the same endurance as the rest of us. You know, he, he's not the strongest guy. You know, that's why he's so relatable is he has a hard time taking on five or six thugs at the same time. You know, you go back in season one, and you look at the hallway fight, and he's having trouble there, you know? And even, you know, season two, season three, he needs to take a breath sometimes, and he doesn't have unlimited endurance, you know? He's not Batman to where he can take on 70 goons in the same room at once. Daredevil's just like the rest of us, you know? He's human, he's relatable, he has to take a breath, and he usually gets injured. Here, he has quite the endurance. There's nothing like it was in Daredevil. She-Hulk does the thunderclap. He gets blown all the way into a car. And his head hits the side of it really good. Uh, come on! Gotcha. Uh, he probably should have a concussion, but he seems relatively fine. He gives a quick line about how his hearing used to be good. I kind of wish they did more with that and explored that a bit more, but to be fair, I guess watch the show if you need more information. But in the show... Daredevil season two explored that a bit more to where if he gets hit too hard in the head, like when Punisher shoots him, his hearing's gonna be off and he's gonna have trouble like sensing things around him. I think Charlie Cox ultimately holds it together. He really kept the spirit of Daredevil and he does a lot of things very well. There's a lot of really wholesome moments in the episode that I do appreciate. The bar scene is great. The His introduction scene's great. And the scene with him talking to uh, Jennifer on the rooftop, both when he's talking about heartbeats and when he's talking about how next time he's in LA, he'll ask her to dinner or something. Just, there's a lot of really wholesome moments that I can't help but appreciate. And again, I can't act like they completely butchered his character because they didn't. There's a lot of things I do like. And overall, again, it was a fun episode to watch and I didn't really mind it. I wasn't completely offended by it. It's just small little no moments, you know, the stupid quips that he makes at times, the quips during the final battle were a bit much. But overall, I wouldn't say he was bad in the episode. I would say he's fine. And if if the MCU keeps him like this, then I will tolerate it. I hope they make him better after this and regress him more to where he used to be in the Daredevil show, you know, the dry sense of humor. I can't lie to you, as someone who is a massive Daredevil fan, a massive fan of this interpretation, it is cool to see him again. Like, it's it's really cool to see him again, playing the character, you know? I'm still cautiously optimistic, but I do hope I could see him again. Specifically, if you want to put him in, in Spider-Man 4, if you want to have him cross over with Spider-Man again, have those two have a live-action team-up against Kingpin or something, or Tombstone, uh, I'd be uh, okay with that, to say the least. I think that'd be a great idea. Uh, let me know your thoughts, honestly. I'm really curious what you thought of Daredevil in this episode. Uh, what you, is, is She-Hulk good? And genuinely, this is a serious question. Should I watch the rest of She-Hulk? <laughs> I was kind of debating whether or not I should even make this video and just watch the rest of She-Hulk and talk about it. Genuinely, let me know. Should I do that? Should I not? I will see you guys later on to the next video, whatever it is. Peace out.